Hello everybody, my name is Trent, and welcome back to yet another installment of Life Stories. As usual, I will be your guide. Today, we will be taking a look at everyone's favorite group of individuals, especially if you're familiar with this channel, Entitled Parents. And without further ado, our first story of the day is... Entitled daughter lies to her mother about us throwing firecrackers at her, then mother confronts me and my friends. Backstory. Before the new year, I usually throw firecrackers with my friends. I bought firecrackers, which are allowed at my age, 15 while my friends bought stronger ones. We were throwing them in a field which was big, really freaking big. Next to that field was a building. Okay, let's start. Our cast is E.M., the mom, E.D., the mom's daughter, F1, the older friend, and F2, the second friend. The school here in Bosnia finished on the 27th, so we finished our classes. I gathered with my two friends and we decided to go throw some firecrackers, cuz why not? We went to the field nearby and started throwing them. There was this one girl who kept moving closer to them. She was probably five years younger than me, and we kept telling her to move. She never did. Then my friend, M1, threw one big firecracker. I think it could be heard through the entire neighborhood. The girl got scared and went to call her mother. About five minutes later, we see E.M. marching towards us. I told myself, crap. The girl, now E.D., said, Mom, they were throwing firecrackers at me! E.M. said, you disrespectful idiots! How dare you! Do you know who I am? Me, F1, and F2. Uh, nope, we don't. I am a teacher at, insert my school's name here, and you have to respect me. I have never seen this teacher at my school. Nope, never in these nine years I've been in my primary school. You, you, and you, what are your names? We just spat out fake names. She pretends she knows us and that she'll lower our grades. F1 says, okay, now you can leave us alone. We didn't do anything to your daughter. Yes, you did! You threw that big firecracker near me! You were coming towards them, and besides, you had enough time to get away from them. The firecracker's fuse was pretty long. I'm going to sue you for injuring my child. I will not be disrespected like this. We didn't injure your child. We kept telling her to go back to her friends or whatever. No, you didn't. I saw you through the balcony. Her balcony was on the other side of the building, not looking at the field we were at so there's no way she could have seen us. F1 quietly whispers to me that we should get away from here, or she will really call the police. I agree with him. F2 and EM are still arguing, and then, wham! EM slapped F2 across the face. She starts crying. I come to calm her down. What the heck? That's what you get for disrespecting me! We did not disrespect you! Your kid started all this! If she did, then why are you throwing firecrackers at her? We didn't! I just wanted to get the heck out of that psycho's face. We started walking away from her, but she grabbed F1 by the jacket. He slapped her wrist and she let go. She started screaming like a banshee, cursing everything that exists. We got out of there, and I went to coffee with F2 and enjoyed the rest of the day. Well, you know what? Sometimes you encounter banshees in the wild and it's best to leave, so you made the right call. The title of our next story has an especially threatening aura, and that is Karen on the Public Bus. For a bit of background, I'm online schooled, and I ride the public bus to my mom's work every other day to do my schoolwork. I'm in middle school currently, and I'm 14. I've had my fair share of weird experiences, was offered weed, man tried to steal my phone, some kid making TikToks on the bus, etc. But this one just happened yesterday. I listened to music on the bus, like every other teenager, and I didn't notice that Karen tried to talk to me until she tapped my shoulder. Why are you skipping school? This was at about 10.30 a.m. on a normal school day. I take out my earbuds. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Ugh, why are you skipping school? Uh, I'm homeschool- You need to go back to school. You're setting a bad example for my kid. I look over, and I see her kid, not even paying attention. He's just messing around on a tablet. He looked to be about three to four years old. I'm on my way to school. Where do you go to school then? My mom works as a professor for a medical university, so I thought I might tease her a little. 
I say the name of the university. Liar. You don't look smart enough for that. Where do you actually go to school? At this point, the other people on the bus start staring, and my bus stop is one stop away. My bus stop is a one minute walk away from said university, so maybe she'll actually believe me. I pull the cord to signal a stop. At this point, Karen has calmed down a little due to people staring. Ugh, just get off. I get off, and once I get to my mom's office, I told her all about it. She laughed, and then we went out and got some nachos for lunch. TLDR, Karen thinks that I'm skipping school, but when I'm actually on my way to school. You know what, at the end of the day, I might deal with the Karen to get some nachos. I don't know about you. So we've heard about people getting screamed at by Karens, followed by Karens, even attacked by Karens. But this next story is a bit of a curveball. We're jumping all over public settings today, clearly. We've gone from school and public field to the bus. Now we're on to the doctor's office. Is there anywhere that the Karens will not defile? Our next story is titled, Entitled Daughter Thinks Her Mother Should Receive Special Treatment at the Doctor's Office. Hi everyone, this just happened, and I am just fuming and had to vent. So, for context, my dad is a doctor, and whenever his nurse can't work, and I'm at home from college, I come down to his office to do the paperwork. That means I'm the one calling the patients in as well. Everyone gets an appointment, usually weeks early, so no one has to wait for too long. I go into the waiting room to call in the next patient when a 40-ish woman jumps at me. I help my dad out a lot, and I've had my share of experience with entitled parents, so I know right away that this won't be easy. Yes? Uh, how may I help you? You have to treat my mom right now. I look at said mom, because we do give priority to acute cases, but this lady seems absolutely fine. When do you have your appointment? It was two weeks ago. We couldn't make it. Well, you should have called in and asked for a new one. I can't take your mother without one. Would you like a new appointment for next week? No, I won't be here for three weeks, and I don't want her coming here alone. In that case, you can either sit down and hope that someone won't show up to their own appointment, or we can take her after the last patient. I am not going to sit here until 13.30. There's not much I can do about it then. I have to leave earlier than that. Lady, please listen, I cannot check you in before other patients who had their appointments fixed weeks ago. If you're in such a hurry, you can ask someone if they will let you in on their time. Otherwise, you'll have to wait. We will admit your mother after hours, or in case someone doesn't show up. I turn to the old lady, who's next, and call her in. Later, when I open the door again, I look at E.D. and ask her if anyone came. E.D. rolls her eyes like an upset toddler. Yeah, someone's here for you to let in before my mother. I turn to the man waiting nearby. Are you the next patient? Uh, yes, I am. Please, come in. Will you never let us in? Miss, I don't have time for this. I explained to you that you have to wait. We will admit your mother today. So far, she has stayed and rolls her eyes every time I admit a new patient. I'm curious how long it'll be before she starts it all over again. The entitlement of some patients baffles me. See, the solution, guys, is to be a little bit more like me. Help your fellow doctors by never going outside. That way, you don't get sick. If less young people are sick, then parents will have a harder time finding things to be entitled about. <laughs> I'm so smart. And moving on from that, we have just enough time for one more. Our final story of today will be Entitled Mother Behaves Like a Five-Year-Old. So, like one month ago, my mom wanted to go with me to some Christmas market thing. We went there, it was okay. Sucks to be with your mom there, but it was alright. After quite some time, she says she's cold and wants to go home. I take a lot of buses, so I know the deal. There's a bus standing on the bus stop, and I hop in and tell my mom to come quickly. She was reading the schedule. We drive one station to the central station. Apparently, we just missed the bus home. She gets mad. You're doing everything so fast! If we read the schedule, it would have been all good! I still wanted to stay for a bit! There are two options now. Walk home, or go back and take the bus home from there. The bus back was about to come. No, we don't go back! You ruined everything! Now I have to walk home because of you. I don't want to go back anymore because you ruined everything! So we went home, even though she wanted to go back, but didn't because she was too cool to do that and had to whine that we left. She complained the whole way back about how I ruined her day. When we got home, she opened the door, went in, smashed the door before I could enter, and screamed, JERK, from the other side. She opened it like one minute after, but I already went away. I only could hear the door open. 
Okay, for real, the behavior here kind of inexcusable, but who actually likes Christmas shopping? I'd probably turn into a five-year-old too. And with that one out of the way, we are all out of time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you once again for tuning in to another installment of Life Stories. My name is Trent. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell so you don't miss any of these videos. I'm very much looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the stories, the new content, or even me. So I hope you all have a fantastic day or night, and I will see you in the next installment.